Good morning, my name is Captain Harlan Truman. I'm an uh, instructor pilot here at uh, Sierra West Airlines. I have approximately 18,000 hours total time, a little over 8,000 hours PIC in the Metro. Hi, my name is Captain Michael Bach, and I have approximately 4,200 hours. I'm PIC typed in the Lear 35 and the Metroliner. I have 2,000 uh, PIC in the Metroliner. We're here today to show the new first officers how a proper pre-flight is done on the Metroliner. Okay. The first thing you do when you get to the aircraft is you want to open the door. You want to make sure that the handle is in the proper position. You push in here, stick it out, slide it down, and make sure that you catch it as it comes down because it'll free fall. And then the snub will connect in a lower on its own. You also want to leave the door in the open position. The reason being is that you want these bayonets to stay retracted. If you'll see, you open that up and the bayonets are extended. If you try to close the door with the bayonets extended, it'll damage the bayonets and you will not be able to use the door. The first thing you want to do is you want to look at this flap. You raise it up and you look at this air tube right here. Make sure that it is not kinked or broken. The reason being is when the aircraft is pressurized, it produces a pneumatic lock in the door handle to prevent it from opening in flight. So raise the flap handle and look at your tube. The first thing we do is we go into the aircraft and grab the aircraft flight logbook. We turn to the last page and we want to look at the total time on the airplane. As Harlan just showed you, after looking in the aircraft flight logbook for the total aircraft time on the last entry, you want to find the operations manual. Usually in the first page, we will have what's called an inspection summary form, which shows which inspection is due next. Now if you notice, you look over here by aircraft time, you'll have two flight times. You want to choose the lowest flight time, aircraft time, and that will be your next inspection. And the type of inspection is to the left of the aircraft type. When you enter the cockpit, you want to look immediately to the left behind the captain's seat at the J-Box. You'll have three circuit breakers. One of them, the large one, is a non-essential bus. All of them must be in. Next, you want to look at your emergency controls. You want to look at the pin, make sure that it's in there and it's secure. You need to make sure that everything is in the appropriate position and stowed properly. Now look at the left essential bus next to the pilot seat. All the main switches should be pointed to the left. As you go up the panel, check and make sure all the circuit breakers are in. These left four switches should be in the forward auto position. Voltage selector should be in the bus position. The SRL Delta P over P power switches should be selected in the normal position. On the right essential bus, all circuit breakers must be in. All bus tie switches must be to the right. The first seven switches on the pilot side are anti-DI switches. They should be in the off position. The next set is your battery and generator switches. They should also be in the off position. Your third set of switches are your light switches. They should be in the off or normal position. Unless you're going to check for a night flight, then they should be all selected up if the battery's on. we continue down the center pedestal, we have the rudder trim and the aileron trim. Below that we have three night rheostat switches.
It's also important during pre-flight to reset the fuel consumption pounds gauge to zero as well as resetting it at the end of each of your legs. Also mark down the beginning and end Hobbs time on each leg. First officer will check the trims before the captain arrives at the aircraft and what he or she will do will select pilot trim, place your hands on the two trim switches on the captain's yoke. First you want to start with the left switch, down and up, you should have no movement, no sound. Next on the right side, you should have a uh, sound up and down but no movement. Then we'll use both switches together, down and up, and you should have movement of the trim. And you can hear the trim motor in the back running. And you should see an indication on your trim indicator of movement. Now we want to check that the selector switch, when placed in the off position, will stop the trim movement. And it does. Now we will place the selector switch to the co-pilot side and uh, repeat the procedure on the captain side, verifying that there is no movement or indication on the trim indicator. Now we will repeat the procedure we just did on the captain's yoke with the selector in the co-pilot position. Left toggle, down and up, no movement, no sound. Right toggle, down and up, sound, no movement on the trim indicator. Both switches, we hear the tone and the trim indicator is moving. And also while we're moving, if we select it to the off position, no sound, no movement. As the co-pilot's trim is moved, you should be able to override that with the auxiliary trim button. And verify on the trim indicator. The trim indicator shows that we are out of range for the trim and as we increase our power levers we should hear a steady tone which alarms us that the trims are out of takeoff range. Make sure that your SAS servo is off. Hit the stall warning to stall select. Then turn your SAS clutch on. Grip your control firmly. Select ta uh, stall test. You should get 60 pounds of pressure. Should indicate a stall on your indicator. Turn the stall SAS servo off. Hold on to the yoke. Select stall again. There is no pressure. Release, and you're done. For the Kawi pump test, place the selector to the number one pump position and verify on the enunciator panel that it illuminates, indicating the pump is working. Repeat the procedure for pump number two. When checking the electric fuel pumps, place the selectors in both the main and aux positions for the number one and number two fuel pumps, left and right. You'll also notice indication on the fuel pressure indicator. Now we'll check the number one and number two inverters. When switching from the number one to the number two inverters, we will select the off position. When the off position is selected, you will notice on the enunciator panel that both the left AC bus and right AC bus lights illuminate. The last thing you do is you want to check your O2. You select your uh, cover up, you push it in, Once it's in, you should have a green selector. 
You raise it up here and test. Make sure that it's working. Because these leaks, you want to go ahead and just disconnect it for the time being until it's in actual use. Make sure that the first aid kit is properly sealed and the fire extinguisher is properly charged. Now that the interior inspection is complete, we will start with the exterior inspection. To initiate your pre-flight inspection, you want to look at the wing road, look at the fairing, make sure there's no cracks, nothing is missing. As you come across here, this is actually uh, on a 15,000, 14.5 bird. This is not a boot. You want to look at your cooling turbine inlet and your cooling turbine exhaust and also your vent for your batteries. As you come across your cell, you want to look and make sure that your halon pressure is it, as per the AFM. You have these clamshell latches here. There's three on each side. You want to make sure that they are connected properly. Otherwise, this will open in flight. Make sure this is in all the way as you close it and it does click. An easy way to check it is just tap it. If they are loose, they will pop open. As you come across to the front of the engine, you have these intake plugs. You want to remove them carefully. Note that it overhangs on the prop. The reason that is, is because if you accidentally leave the plugs in and you start the engine, when the prop turns, it'll pull the plugs out. One of the first things you want to look at is the air intake into the engine. As you look into the engine, you want to look at the compressor blades. Make sure that they are uh, undamaged. You can actually rotate the aircraft uh, propeller about a quarter turn and you can uh, see most of the blades. Also, you want to make sure that your Cowie uh, tubes are unobstructed and you want to look at your P2T2 sensor make sure it is undamaged and make sure that your intake is clear. Now remember when you rotate the blade to inspect it make sure that you rotate it in the direction of the boots. The reason being is your generator brushes when you rotate it backwards will damage the brushes on your starter generator. So make sure you turn it in the direct natural direction that it should flow. While you're walking around the engine nacelle, you want to check and make sure these latches are in uh, proper position. Check to make sure they're not loose. All you have to do is just tap on it. If they're loose and they're not connected properly, they will pop open on you. There's a little hook inside. It latches on and it secures the nacelle cover from popping open in flight. Next thing you want to look at is your engine oil. If you have a, a utility tool like this with a Phillips head, it's very easy to access this. Just give it a half turn, it pops out, it's spring loaded. This is your filler cap for your oil. Most often you will not need any oil. However, you have a clear glass sight picture with a ball inside and it should be full. If it's not full, you need to spin the prop at least 15 times to see if you can get the oil to work up in there. If there's no oil after you spin the prop, then it needs uh, oil serviced. To close it, you do the reverse. Just go ahead and pop your screws in with a half turn. The proper indication for the hydraulic levels in the sight glasses, the bottom clear glass should be full of hydraulic fluid and the top should be at least half. Above that is where the, our mechanics service our hydraulic fluid. You don't need to worry about that. Make sure it's closed. Check the wing inspection light, make sure it's not cracked, all the screws are in. Now we're looking at the boot, make sure there's no rips, tears, bubbling all the way along. As you can see here, there's a patch. Patches should not be overlapping each other and should be flush mounted. Keep looking along the boot here. This is your glare shield for your recog light, no cracks. All the screws are in, no cracks in the recog light plastic. Take a look at the light bulbs themselves, make sure there's no cracks. General condition of the boot. As we move along, you can see more patches. Notice they're not overlapping. They can be next to each other, but not overlapping. Now our position lights, make sure the lenses aren't cracked. And at night, you can turn on the lights, make sure they're operating. Now we're looking at our static wicks. Make sure they're secure, not 
loose. We have four here. As we come down the wing on the back side, you can see a vent here. This is a NACA vent. This supplies positive air pressure for your fuel tanks. Come back around, make sure your ailerons are not jammed, free movement. Along the flaps, make sure there's no cracks, anything broken. Uh, as you look in your exhaust, make sure there's nothing inside as well as the screws around the exhaust are all uniform and in place. And always make sure that your safety pins are in place. You can see one here and in there, there, and on the top part you have one right over there. One of the things you want to check as you're walking around the aircraft is you want to look up here at your emergency exit. There is one on the left side, two on the right side. It needs to be flush and make sure that it is not cracked open. It could cause pressurization problems if you have a leak. To open up the cargo door, you select the handle like you do on the passenger door. You open it up and be careful as you raise the door that you catch the lanyard so you don't have to climb up there and pull the door down. Also after once the door is open, there is a guard that you flip down to protect the entryway to the cargo door. To close it is the exact reverse operation as opening it. As you come out to the aircraft, take a look at your rudder trim indicator and make a note of it. When you go back in the cockpit, you can check the cockpit indicator and make sure those match. Very important. Also check your pedostatic vents. These are your pedostatic vents. Make sure they're clean, free of obstruction. And here is your outflow valve static vent. Very important. Make sure that's clean and clear. Here is your outflow valve vent. And this is where the pressure raises stops, right here. Also take a look at your tail light. No cracks. Clear. Take a look at your static wicks on your elevator. Nothing's broken or damaged. Also your rudder. Static wicks on the rudder. Should be four. We already showed you the left side static ports for the captain. These are the co-pilot's static vents on the right side of the aircraft. Very important, just ahead of that, is the oxygen pressure relief indicator. Should be green and not blown out. It's located in the aft bulkhead. After you do your walk around on the wings, you want to look at the undercarriage of the airplane. Notice you have dual tires, two tires. Some of them may have uh, lots of tread on it. Some of them don't have quite as much tread. What you're looking for is for anything like you learned when you got your private pilot's license. You're looking for proper inflation, for cracks. On the tire, if there's any cord showing and there's no tread, then you cannot, the tire is unusable. You need to have maintenance replace the tire. You want to have at least a hands width separation. You want to look at your brake lines. These are your brake lines. Make sure that there's no hydraulic fluid leaking out of the brake lines. These are your squat switches. You may test them by pushing them in. Check that they move freely. You have one on each side. You want to look at your bracing. This is over centered. You want to make sure it's properly extended. And there is no damage. Everything is connected properly. While you're looking at the landing gear, you want to look at the brakes. You want to make sure that there's plenty of brake pad left and they appear not to be damaged. After you check the landing gear, you want to check inside the landing gear wheel well. Then you look inside and you want to make sure that everything is intact. You want to make sure that the hoses are complete and not damaged. You want to make sure there's no leaking hydraulic fluid. You want to look at your up locks and you want to inspect your generator control switches that are on the upper left hand corner. After you're finished, you go ahead and secure the doors back into their proper position. One other thing you want to check is where your 
GPU plugs in. You want to make sure that there's no damage to it. There are two locations. One's on the side of the right engine nacelle, and the other is underneath the wing, right side root, under the fuselage. Now we're looking at the pressurization static vents. Make sure they're clean. The next thing you want to do is you want to open up your baggage door. You depress these and allow them to pop out. Then you open up the door. Make sure that you look inside. Here's a visual sight gauge for your Cowie. You can visually look and see what your quantity is to verify what's uh, indicating on your gauge inside the cockpit. Next thing you do is when you close the door, make sure that both latches are secure and that they do pop and doesn't hurt to tap it just a little bit. Make sure it doesn't spring out. And here we have the Cowie filler port, which our mechanics use to service our Cowie tank. Here we have the SAS stall vane, one of them. And there's a co-pilot pedal mast as well as a pilot pedal mast on top of the nose cone. As we check the nose wheel tires, same as the main wheel tires, uh, you're looking for no cord showing, you have enough tread. On your strut, proper inflation, no dirt on that silver shiny cylinder of the strut. Make sure all your bolts have cotter pins and there is no obstructions. Uh, come around, look at your taxi light on the nose wheel, make sure it's not cracked. And inside the nose wheel well, make sure there's no leaks, no damaged lines, anything out of the ordinary. Captain Harlan Truman. I hope you've enjoyed this instruction on a proper pre-flight inspection. I'm Captain Michael Bach. I'd like to welcome you to Sierra West Airlines and fly safe. Here are your outtakes. Here are your outtakes. <laughs> Especially with this guy. <laughs> Power levers. Actuate them. Check for the freedom of travel of the power levers. Hold on a second. We turn to the last page and we want to look at the total time on the airplane. Cut. What are you pointing at? <laughs> your name. Now that we've completed the interior inspection of the cockpit, we'll proceed outside and do our exterior expansion. Expansion? And at night, first officers should turn on the masters and check all the lights, including your position lights, your strobes, wing inspection light, your landing lights, and your... At night, the first officers can turn on the master switch battery and check all the lights ensure that they are working that includes your taxi light landing light your nav lights your recog lights your beacons and your wing inspection light forgot the strobe at night the first officers should turn on the batteries and check all the lights that includes the nose color synchronizer switch takeoff and landing flap controls up on the pilot's console, check the left essential bus tie switch on, which is outboard. The boom mass select. Go ahead. Take a look at the nose wheel landing light. Ah, uh, taxi light. Ah. Next, we'll look at. <laughs> nose wheel steering switch should be off. SAS test switch should be off, unfeather test switch centered, SRL delta P over P test switch normal, temp limiter test switch centered. So you 
you're looking for proper inflation for cracks if it is showing uh, tread anywhere on the wheel it is unsafe so make sure that you can see as much as possible make sure there's no tread you want to look at your brake line sas test quest test <laughs> <laughs> blah, 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 blah.